Hi, everyone. Today, I'm here with Giovanna, and I'm excited about this conversation because I'm, I've been wanting for you all to get to meet her. She has been so kind to have interviewed me on her podcast already, uh, which is, a, um, a, I'm looking forward to the podcast series itself because the first one was with Derek Sivers, one of my heroes as well, and that was a really great episode. So I hope you all will check out our podcast. But um, she's a rising star, and uh, you're going to hear a lot more about her in the future. But let's just get into the conversation. I'll, I'll kind of weave in a little bit about her background as we, as we talk. But Ioana, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is such a pleasure. Your work changed my life last year and made me fall in love with marketing again. So oh. it's a great honor to be here. So I think we met on Instagram. Is that yeah, right? I, that's but how I first... first found out about you on Swiss Miss newsletter. Yes, right. She sends an amazing newsletter every Sunday and I'm a loyal subscriber. Yeah. And she referenced your video that you don't have to feel like do feel right to do good, that you need to do good and then you will feel right. Yes, yes. And that is how I found you. And then we start interacting on Instagram and that's how... Yeah, because I was sharing your content like crazy yeah. to my Serbian community. And <laughs> at one point you're like, who are all these Serbian women from? <laughs> and that's one of the things I've, I've really noticed about you is you are very generous in sharing other people's work. You're a great supporter of a, of a lot of people. And no wonder a lot of people want to support you back. Um, one of the things, you've, you've ran several programs. Uh, I think one of them that you're currently... Um, emphasizing is your business revamp program, which has over 1,500 people have participated in the business revamp. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, mostly awesome. women. There are 23 guys, but mostly women uh, because I started that program in the ex-Yugoslav region, which includes Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, Montenegro, Macedonia. And uh, women here, not all of them speak English well. So they had, they had like a need for someone to explain things uh, that are relevant here in the Balkans. It's different market than the U.S. Definitely. Yeah. And what's what's interesting? I mean, this part of part of your what you've been able to accomplish is that you you come from a region where the monthly income is something like several hundred dollars U.S. Three fifty, yeah, three hundred fifty dollars U.S. Yeah. And your you've been able to create a business that is more than ten times that amount yeah. of income, and so you have a lot of uh, credibility, I guess, to be able to help others turn their passion into uh, a viable uh, income and a very good income for themselves. You've had, uh, you've had the experience of living in how many countries? I know seven I've countries, yeah. Seven countries, right? So yeah. New York, you've worked, you've lived and worked, lived in, lived uh, and worked in, in New York. York before that, Montclair in New Jersey, uh, London, uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, uh, Cyprus in Limassol in Belgrade so a lot of places uh, yes. it's mostly due to work and study I love yeah. to travel the world I love to get to know other cultures and I love languages so I've been studying English and French since I was age five uh, because I, I was such a nerd like since the early age I heard a Celine Dion song on the TV and I said to my mom I need to go to learn English, to understand. This is such a beautiful song and I don't understand what this woman is saying. So that is what actually started me. That's amazing. And you have, um, I mean, you, you've had so many experiences already. Um, you're barely 30, but you've already traveled the world. I mean, you, you spent three years traveling the world for free. You figured yeah. out how to do that and to blog about it. Um, and you've learned a lot about that. It's, it's, uh, I think you wrote that it's not all that it's cracked up to Glitz, be, yeah. <laughs> you know, it sounds so of, glamorous, yeah, but, yeah, but tell, tell, us, tell us, first of all, tell us how you did that. How did you travel for three years, you know, for free, get to blog about it. And what was one of the key, I guess, lessons you learned from that experience? So my parents uh, always told me, you can't travel the world for free. You need to deserve it. You need to make so much money and blah, blah, blah. And whenever somebody says something like that, I always um, question it. No matter if it's my parents, if it's a professor, 
I don't really take authority as that they know more. They just have more experience and they're speaking from their experience, which is not necessarily mine. So I always want to test things and I do my research. So while doing my research, I found Tim Ferriss and I found Brooke Sauerd, World Wanderlust. She was a woman who was solo traveling from Australia to all over the world. And I read the whole blog of hers and she impressed me because I saw that she was really traveling for free, staying at these luxurious hotels. And I wondered, what, is it, what does it take to do that? So I read everything what she wrote and then I decided to try and implement because I know that just reading, by reading, I'm not going to get anywhere. So what I did is I wrote uh, over 110 emails to hotels in Europe to offer to come and blog about it. Uh, by, that, by that time, I already had a blog uh, since 2011. So what I did uh, to start get it started like with, I wrote 10 posts about the places I've already visited and I described it really beautifully with nice photos that I took. Uh, keep in mind, I paid for those trips, but I just wrote about it from the heart and uh, wrote a review. And on the bottom of every post, I wrote Jovana Miljanovic was a guest at this hotel, but all my opinions are my own. So I was not lying. I was just like making it look nice. Like if somebody was reading, they would think, hmm, was she paid to do write this? Or was she like just writing it to write it because she likes it? And I sent those 10 as a reference, as a showcase of what I can write and how I present things. I didn't expect anyone to take my word for it. They wanted to see results. So I showed them the results of the ones I previously stayed in. And of course, 90% of the hotels never replied. 10 of them actually did. A majority said no. And one hotel in uh, Budapest, which is really close to Serbia, it's like four hour ride by car. They said yes. So that was how it all started. And that was like September, I think. And then in January, Israel embassy in Serbia took me on a seven day trip. Uh, I just went through all of Israel. It was amazing. It was fully covered by them. I had a private driver with the Wi-Fi in the car. We went to Tel Aviv, Haifa, Jerusalem. After that, there came other countries. I went to Germany. After that, I won Austrian Airlines Global Blogger Challenge. Uh, so that was all like spontaneously. I just had the desire in my heart to travel. I wanted to see if it's really like that, that you can't travel for free. So I found a way. Um, I also followed all the pages of all the airlines and all the embassies on Facebook. And whenever they announced something, like you should write something, film something, and the award is to travel, I would participate. And the funny story, it was a wow Iceland challenge. I also went to Iceland like that for free. So they were offering a free trip to Iceland and all you had to do was to make your Iceland experience and share it with your audience. And one man actually won the challenge, but they, they got another award for me because I was the person who shared it and whose link was shared most. And most people in the world applied because I shared to all my friends, to all my connections, to all my followers. And they awarded that. So that um, still brings me chills because it's a proof that there are people who see, you know, uh, what you do behind the scenes and that you really want everyone to win and we all have equal opportunity. And that if I share it with others, it doesn't make me have less of it because if it's meant for me, it will not pass me. And if it's meant for someone else and I bring that joy to someone else, then it's just good for karma for me, you know. Oh so gosh, that was yeah. about the travels. Yeah, that was like for three years. <clears throat> and after the three years, I started feeling uh, kind of like I was a slave to it. So I was not enjoying it anymore. And that is why we need to test if our dreams are legit yeah. or yes. not. Because it sounds better than it is for most of the things in life. When you try it, you see, oh, now I see it really like 50-50, like everything else. It's not perfection as I envisioned. Maybe, oh, free trips, who doesn't want that? Yeah, but who wants to be a slave when they travel? Who wants to wake up after a 20-hour flight and 6 in the morning until 12 p.m. work and eat food and photograph, but by force, not by enjoying, you know? Yeah. So wow. everything there... turns into nightmare, basically, is There's... what I'm trying to say. Yeah, nothing is nothing is perfect just perfect there are always second side, side of the coin that's right that's right 
what you just said, I mean, I want to unpack some of this because first of all, you sent emails to over a hundred hotels to get one yes. Yeah. And this, this kind of, these kinds of numbers, we don't realize that's really what's happening for those people who are able to do a lot of great things. You know, sometimes we send emails to you know, five potential, 10 potential promotional partners, for example, and we don't get any response and we think, oh gosh, it failed, it, it didn't work, you know, uh, or I, I, I ran a Facebook ad for $30 and I didn't get any clients, so therefore it doesn't work. People, I, I find this to be so true, people try things with such little uh, um, sincerity almost. And they such, just dip their toes and they're like, they, they, no. they dip their toes, no, it doesn't, doesn't work, but you really try things. Um, yeah. For the hotels, you send 110, you got one, and I've heard the same kinds of numbers from other people, whether it's traveling or whether it's getting people to promote you, mm -hmm. it's, it's that kind of ratio. And it's like everybody watching this, everybody listening, be willing. If you're wanting to say, you know, yes, I want people to promote my business. You got to be willing to send those emails at this kind of ratio. And then yeah. once you get one, just like you said, once you got one, then the, then, then it gets easier. Then after the that field opens. <laughs> the field, yeah. Because now you have more, more case studies, more examples to share yeah. with people. And, and if you have like 20, then the Israeli embassy noticed me on uh -huh. Facebook. You know, uh -huh. it's not like some connection. People always say here in my country, oh, you ha gotta have connections. I'm like, oh, I wish I had 10 connections because I had 10 uh, embassy paid and travel organization paid trips. So if I was really that well connected, I wish. Yeah. So it's not yeah. connections. It's just hard work, persistence, and it yeah. always pays off. And by the way, of course, with hard work and persistence, you make connections. And now, yeah. now you have yeah. some connections that didn't but no, just, I don't born use with it them. to travel. <laughs> yeah, right. But you weren't born with them. That's the, that's the key. No, you, no, you no, your way no, here. no. Um, one of the things you also, you said was about the, the Iceland uh, challenge mm -hmm. that, that you were, <laughs> you know, instead of keeping the opportunity to yourself. It's a secret. <laughs> right, which a lot, of, a lot of people understandably, it's a competition. So you want fewer competitors. But instead, you said, you know what, this sounds like a great opportunity. You shared it with everybody. And th this doesn't always happen. But sometimes it does. And it, it, no matter what, you, you said good karma, you're bringing joy, you bring opportunity to so many people. But as an example, this came back to you and said, they said, wow, we noticed this. And mm -hmm. we want to thank you. And it, it happens more often than you think, but, but you mm. do it without thinking about, oh, what's in it for yeah, me? Yeah, it was not it a because... strategy. Like, um, like, who could have known that? Like, there right. was no way in hell that right. I would know that. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's how travel turned out to be really <laughs> not what I once expected it to be. And that is fine. We should realize our, our dreams and see that they're not our dreams anymore. It is okay because the process and the progress and what we learn, that is why we were in it. It's yeah. not about the result. The result came and it wasn't what I was expected, but maybe I changed. Yeah. It's okay to not be happy with your result. Mm -hmm. And you've also had experience, I mean, in the process of creating your ideal work, okay, your ideal business, your ideal, you also had the process of founding a couple of mobile apps. Right? Yeah. You, you got some seed investment, you went and you worked to buy very hard, you know, yeah. like 24 hours a day or something. For, to, to try to create this, these mobile apps. So tell us about what you learned from that experience. And... So I came into that world because I was told I don't belong there. So when people ridicule me, laugh at me and tell me I can't do something, well, just like my family said, you can't travel for free. I'm like, okay, maybe, but maybe I can. So I decided to try. So I prepared my pitch for that competition uh, challenge in Serbia. And actually it was only programmers. I was the only lady who was pitching. And I came out there and I pitched and I won $30,000 seed investment. And I was like, wow, well, this is a sign you can actually do something. You know, if you have a good idea, if you have somebody that you will call for help when it comes to development, you don't need to have, you don't have to know the whole process. You this is really important know. because you're not a programmer. No, I don't know how to program, do design or anything. But and I've been blogging are, since like forever. 
but you are a connector. I mean, you are somebody yeah. who has ideas and then you're like, hey, let's do this together. And you're mm -hmm. able to kind of- And I um, always bring people with me, you know, whenever yes, I traveled yes. or got a job in, a, in another country, I brought at least five Serbian people to work with me because I like to spread the knowledge and like help other people uh, bring them up with me, you know, that's, I think my superpower definitely. And yeah, about that. So we went there to Dubai. I was om almost like the only lady there. It was mostly guys. It was very hard because as it turned out, that was not my dream job either. So I had this collection of failures for 10 years, like basically, as I like to say, failing my way into success because I was just looking at the lights and I was like, oh, this sounds flashy and nice. Let me try it out. So I tried travel blogging. I even, I worked as a cabin crew. I tried mobile apps. I failed, I failed, I failed. Not necessarily when I say failed, it means it didn't re uh, bring me the result that I was happy with in my heart. So I was like, okay, if it's not this, let's see what's next. What sparks me? What brings me joy next? And I was just following that spark. And it was like, no, 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 no. And after 10 years, I found a click. So it's not realistic to expect that for the first thing that we see and we achieve will be the one. It's like dating. I don't need it to work 10 times. I only need it to work once and I will be in a happy partnership. So yes. we, we need much less than we think. This is really, uh, and because of your willingness to try all these different things, You've had 10 years of really rich experiences and you're, you're, you're not even 30 yet. Now, just to give you yeah. some perspective, I didn't even start my business until I was like 32. Okay. So, so, you know, now I'm 43 and of course I've learned so much since then, but it's like, you're, 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 you still have so much time, but of course, I hope so. Those, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but even, even for those, those who are watching, who are in their sixties, for example, or even 70s, like these days with medical technology, people are gonna live, you know, without- Oof, 100. My yeah, grandma exactly. just turned 90 in January. Wow, yeah. congratulations. That's I mean, you know, people yeah. always see the end result and they think of like, oh, it must be easy. But when I'm doing this in English, this is my first interview. I'm nobody, nobody knows about me in the US. And I'm telling you in this interview, I'm, I will be making millions in the US and I'm, I will be talking about how I did that. Right now I'm making zero. Yeah, yeah. And I know that because I know that I'm ready to fail until it works. If it takes me 20 years, it's fine. Maybe I'm just slow. If it takes me 30 years, okay, I'll get there in 30 years. Am I in a rush? No. <laughs> yeah. Where? I mean, Where am I running to, you know? Every day, I mean, and, and people can see your... Um, you're very active on Instagram stories, for example, yeah. and people can see your activities on a day-to-day -day basis. Every day you are learning, you are growing, yeah. you are, you're, because, and that's, to me, that's really what life is about. Life is not about achieving some kind of success, you know, some kind of numbers or some kind of fame. Life is about the growth that happens yeah, the every day. And that and is what I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. You, you Because you I from... know when I reach the end goal, I will say, ma, next. Right. And I'm then, like, yes. I know this. I've done it yeah. like for the past 30 years. I know this. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see what can I do that will bring me joy daily because we know yes. the end result is never as we imagined. Yeah, the end result is just a milestone on this ever growing journey. So one of the ways, of course, you learn through experiences, but also you learn a lot through reading and watching videos and listening to podcasts. I mean, you are, um, you read many books a year yeah. uh, from what I can tell. Uh, and I your, read your a book a day, almost every day, like five books That's per week. That's so a must amazing. for me. Yeah. Since I was a child, it was my escape. It was my passion. And my parents forced me to go outside and play. I'm like, no, it's so much more fun in this book. You know, it was... That's amazing. It's, it's very different because I've actually always had trouble reading. Um, a lot of people wouldn't, couldn't believe it. but yes i have a trouble reading i don't have as much trouble i used to have trouble talking too now i don't but reading is still a bit of a challenge but so tell us about um i mean there's so many books you've read uh what's a book that you are reading right now that you are really enjoying or, or recently uh recently atomic habits yes okay I love yeah. that book. James Clear is amazing. Yes, and he is yes. a living proof of somebody who did the work and who sent those newsletters and who put uh, the effort. And then the book came out and now it seems like an overnight success, which is not. The book is amazing. Uh, this is the second time I'm reading it. So it's really good. Uh, I always do the highlights. I make notes so I can send it to people. 
And it's a really good book because it's just a constant reminder that we need to enjoy the process to getting somewhere and that we need to actually tie our identity around our goals. So if, for example, I want to lose weight and I am at a party and everyone is like, take a cake, take a cake. I will not say, no, I can't take a cake. I'm on a diet. I will say, I'm not eating cake. It's fine. Because then people won't push you. And then when you tie it to your identity, you don't feel like, you're in lack, like, oh, I can't eat this cake. I'm so sad. No, you're like, so I'm not a cake eater. I am eater. not a cake eater. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm not a smoker. It's not yeah. like I won't have a cigarette right now. Right, 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 right. So yeah. that's one of the points from the book, but uh, definitely it's a good book. But my yes. all-time favorite book is Viktor Frankl. Um, I don't know search how for meaning. in English, Search for Meaning in Serbia, yes. they translated it as, why didn't you kill yourself? Which is a bit <laughs> morbid, I know. <laughs> But yeah, the title is very catchy in Serbian. And yes. so I found this book when I was very de in a depressive mood mm. a few years ago. Yeah. And it really, really helped me a lot. And especially after visiting Israel and learning about their culture more in depth, it's just mind blowing. Like tell, I love that book. Yeah. Tell, what, what's, what, what did you get out of the book? What, what really helped you to, you know, get out of the, the, the dark place you were in? Uh, his, uh, the way he wrote about the experience when they were there and how mm -hmm. I remember this sentence where he says, the best of us didn't make it. The best people. And that is like, you have this one opportunity in life and maybe if you're the best in the world, you won't get to get to tomorrow. So you better use today wisely. And that is the message that really resonated with me. And also that you cannot break a human soul. You can beat someone to death. You can do anything to the human body, but you will never reach to the sacred space that is inside. And uh, since I'm religious, that really resonated with me that you cannot break a human spirit, no matter what you do, and that we are all always safe and protected, no matter when it seems that life is pushing us in the corner, it is happening for us, not to us. So that whole idea, this book would not be here now if he didn't go through that experience. And this book definitely changed millions of lives. And the way he does his therapy now in Austria and also there are therapists that are trained in his um, way of therapy here in Serbia, I think that if we say, was it worth it? I would not wish upon anyone to go what Victor went through. But the result from that is changing millions of people. So just puts things into perspective. It's amazing book. And it's like, like this, like I think you can read it in two hours. Yeah, it's very, it's very short. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this sort of inner spirit, the human spirit, because one of the things you said earlier was that when someone says you can't do something, you actually kind of rebel against that limitation to, to prove them wrong. Now, that's not, that, that's not usual for a lot of people because um, when, those of us who grew up saying, oh, you can't do this, you can't do this, a lot of us believe that. We believe in those limitations. What, is that something you, you think maybe you were just born with this rebellious nature towards those limitations or, or is there something that you think you know, we can develop to, to have that kind of, I guess, strength or that kind of courage to say, well, you know what? I think I can break through. I'm a big questioner since I was a child and that was really a problem for my family and parents. And it, I was very like, um, I don't know the word, but I was hard to be managed even today because I don't take things as they are like, when somebody tell me this should be done like this, I say, okay, can you tell me more? Like explain why? That's the reason I always want, I always knew that I will start my own business even as a kid. My dad was an entrepreneur and my mom was a professor. She still in, is in one school. And that is something that I was like born with, I guess, because I always questioned everything. And even I question myself daily. I question my choices. I'm not afraid to say that I was wrong. Uh, I say it publicly. I'm really, I have no shame around it because it, I think it's healthy. It's a human thing. We all make mistakes and we should be transparent about it. 
and also what might be a mistake for me may not be a mistake for you so I, I don't feel that like my identity is tied to my choices or my results I feel that as a human I'm here I'm worthy so like yourself like anyone else not I'm not my bank account I'm not my passport I'm not my skin color so I don't really get uh, things so personally like when somebody you can't do something I know that they're speaking hopefully from the best intentions because they couldn't do it and that also motivates me to show them that as a child or as a granddaughter or as a girlfriend that I see things differently and to maybe show them that it can be done since they are still on earth there is maybe possibility for them to do something else and question themselves about what they thought about their own life that can't be done and it's possible actually so i feel that some this is something innate in me that i'm no i don't know if i'm a rebel because i don't rebel if i don't if i if something resonates with me and if it feels logical i say okay no problem but if it doesn't feel right in my heart i have to question it because the last thing i would do is betray myself and that's a non-negotiable since i was a kid and um, i remember at family reunions when someone comes um, they want to hug you and pet you basically and i would always say no no i i i don't like this and people would say don't be so mean you know they just want to hug you that's a serbian thing like everyone's here we're very like huggy but i like my boundaries and since i was a child i'm very passionate and very protective of my boundaries because they both physical and energetical and mental um that makes me be myself like i don't let people into my space if they don't <clears throat> deserve i think you've just uh touched on one of the secrets to success something that i've noticed uh, as people grow and become particularly successful in their business is the issue of boundaries is so incredibly important. Uh, boundaries with clients, with audience members, you know, fans, with family, fa family for sure, to be able to allow us to, to, to have the time and space to work with our you know, business partners, et cetera, but with our you know, team members, employees. So what you just said, you know, um, to, to say more about what you think about boundaries and, and how do you, given that you've already reached some level of business success, you've got you know, over a thousand uh, women who have participated in your various programs, um, the, the, you must get a lot of you know, emails, uh, you're, you're, you're I well get a lot of requests. On... Yeah, I get a lot of requests for money, for time, for everything, just yes. like everyone else. Yes. And um, this was very clear because I did my workshops in person. So every woman from those 1,500 I've met, I shook her hand. I talked to her directly. I know exactly what she's doing right now in her work. And I'm very close to them. I have a closed Facebook group for the women that went through my workshops, 550. Uh, are there. So half of them are interested in uh, staying in community, communicating daily. And I have very clear boundaries on the workshop. I tell them, so every day I take two hours of my time and I do customer support. I answer to emails. I never delegate that and I probably never will unless I really have to. So this is what I do. And if I didn't answer today, they know that I had other priority emails and they will wait until tomorrow. It's never more than two days. Uh, also in the Facebook group, I go uh, in the evening. I cannot let my day be managed by other people. On my phone, I never have any notifications. I never have any sound. I haven't heard an alarm or a sound for, I don't know, since elementary school. So uh, my family knows that when I'm busy, I will not answer. And when I see and when I can talk, I will answer. Uh, people never upset me in that way because I understand that something is urgent to them, but that doesn't make it my priority. I'm very focused. When I wake up every day, I don't turn it on immediately. I check in with myself. What do I need to do today? Okay, let's chill. Let's meditate. Let's make some tea. Let's read something and then journal. And then we can see what other people have on their agenda that is somehow related to me. And let's see who I should answer now, who is okay for tonight and who I will answer tomorrow. I know there is nothing urgent because I've been in a life that situations myself, my mom, uh, he had uh, three-stage uh, three cancer 
two times. So we've been through a lot as a family. So I know what urgent means and business ain't urgent on my agenda ever. So uh, by that, I don't mean that I'm not responsible. As I said previously, even when I was in the hospital in 2017, having my right ovary and tumor removed, I was answering emails because I felt okay. I don't know how, but I, was, I felt okay. So when I had time, I would just sit on my bed and answer. So I don't take it not responsibly. I just do it when I want to do it because I don't want to do something and not feel like doing it. Then I'm not an entrepreneur. Then I'm just a, cor like a corporate person. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I came into entrepreneurship because I want to make decisions for my time, for my money and for my energy management. Mm. And if somebody has a problem with that, it's fine. Like they will not work with me because by now I think that they feel my boundaries even by reading my copy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I sound crazy, but you know what mm. I mean? Like they yeah. see, they, nobody ever asked me for my telephone number or should we go to coffee? Because yeah. it's just, they, they see how I live. They're like, no, wow. but they know they can ask, ask every day if they need the business advice and they will mm. get it. Oh, I, and, it's and, just like, yeah. Yeah. And where, where do you, uh, you're on different social media platforms now. Um, of course you've, you've been for a Everywhere. while. Yeah. Wh which, um, tell us about your relationship to them. Like, where do you like to interact most with people? I only interact on email. And now when I started my podcasts, uh, every Friday, I have YouTube comments, but I think I will disable those because I want to redirect everyone to my email. I don't want to waste time on people who want to say bravo, good job, or to advertise themselves or to say you suck because that's not useful information for me. And my brain doesn't have time to manage all the crap. So I feel that if somebody has something to say, which is meaningless, it can be a critique, which I'm open to. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes every day, just like everyone else, or it can be like a feedback or like a anything they can reach out via email with their name and surname because if i'm putting myself vulnerably online i don't want somebody um hiding you know behind the avatar and telling me that i'm doing it wrong okay you can tell me that but tell me with your name and surname don't we're not in high school you know so i feel that is also boundaries with social media yeah people expect that they can reach out anywhere and it's fine expectations are great but I'm not here to answer to anyone's expectations of my, for myself, not even my boyfriend, my family, and not from a stranger from the internet. Yeah. So I'm okay with that if you're like being just honest and real and transparent and uh, just say like at the end of the video, guys, I want to hear your opinion. Shoot me an email. That is the way I like to communicate. Why would anyone normal have a problem with that? Only a troll can have a problem with that because they cannot spam you. You know what I mean? Like, I feel that it's all about being honest and transparent and people who are right uh, in the head, they will understand. And the people who are just mean and want to hurt you, they can be upset. I don't have a problem with that. The key here to me is that you are clear about how you most thrive in communication and yeah. in interaction and you don't mind disappointing. Losing. Yeah. yeah, losing, disappointing other people who don't want to interact in the way that you thrive Absolutely. and that you, you work. And that's, that's a lesson for all of us. Freedom, because it's, that's freedom. Yeah, because it's different for everybody. Some people don't want to do email. Some people want to do something else. Some people want, like social media. Yeah. Some people like Facebook message. Some people like you know, um, Instagram direct message. Whatever it may be, it's like you find your way. So um, I want to I talk a little bit more about how you work with your, your students, your clients. Um, you had so much experience now. You've worked with over a thousand people in revamping their businesses um, or helping them start. So um, I guess this is a big question, but we can go into this um, in more detail. But I'll start with this. Have you noticed any patterns among, uh, among people as you work with them to start or revamp uh, their business. Is there yeah, I mean, that, my clients you, are mostly yeah. women, 35 to 60. Uh -huh. And uh, especially in these countries. Now I work uh, with the global market as well. I didn't for the first 10 years. I just wanted to go in depth in this region because you can't be every, everywhere and everything to everyone. And so what I've discovered is there are like five problems that everyone is, uh, every woman was facing. Uh, one was that she was not good enough, which we all have as humans. I think it's like a thing. And then another one was that she's not perfect. She's not ready. 
she wants to start when she's ready. And I filmed, just before our talk, I filmed a new episode on the podcast, why starting when you are ready is a mistake, because it is. And nobody is ready, I'm never ready. And then another uh, third one was that they want to feel like it. And you address that so well on your YouTube. Like, I mostly don't feel like doing anything. I just want to chill in my bed and put my legs on the wall, you know, and watch uh, the white uh, background. But yeah, that's the third thing. Then the fourth thing is they say they hate marketing and they hate selling because they're thinking of the negative examples. And then the fifth one is their, uh, the fear of rejection because they are very aware that with success comes every new level comes a new devil and they're not ready to face the devils. So those are the typical ones. Of course, every woman, depending on the age and the generation, had her own issues. Like you know, some of them were afraid of the social media, which I fully understand. Sometimes I'm afraid of it and I'm 30, you know? So the ladies that were like 65 years old, they, uh, this is their first time opening an agency in Serbia, starting their business. I'm so proud of them because they feel so uncomfortable and for a reason that they don't, they don't know the world as it is today. And they have so much value to share. And I'm very passionate about the generation over 60. Just because they don't have uh, tools, like in, they didn't have tools like internet. They're not, you know, uh, social media savvy. They have so much wisdom to share that I'm so sad that that wisdom just goes somewhere without others having access to it because this woman can, cannot use the social media and doesn't understand plain and simple how to make a proper or how to outsource, obviously, they mostly outsource a proper website. Uh, I organize the photo shoots for them because they need support, they need community. Nobody is doing that in 65 in Serbia. Here in this country, after 40, you're like done. So, you know, for them to be so brave, uh, they have a lot of judgment from their families. They're like, why, what are you acting? What are you playing to be? You know, who are you to do this? And somehow the community I've built around this idea is what helps them because they know, now they know they have other partners in crime, other women that are 50, 60, who are starting their businesses and that life doesn't finish after you're 40. Yeah. So that is that is uh, the the typical ones. It's amazing. Um, there's a lot. You, you could do a podcast episode yeah. or five on every single one of these. <clears throat> but I want to ask about a couple of these here. Um, the 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 not good enough is a really and it's connected to who are you to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's true. It's like one of the things when we encounter social media is look, there are already so many other people who are doing the kind of thing I want to do and they seem to be so polished and doing it so well, why should I even do bother. it? Or yeah, like why, why should I bother? And is anyone going to watch or listen to me? What, what, do, you, what do you say to that? What's, what's your encouragement or your advice to them? Uh, there is this song, uh, there is this quote, don't die with your song still in you. So oh, that's yeah. the only thing. Yes. When you're on your deathbed, you won't be thinking about all the other YouTubers. You will be wishing you had your own YouTube channel and said something that the future generation can listen to. Yeah. And yeah. The, my reason for doing this is uh, the legacy that I'm going to leave for the next generation to listen to me. And maybe they will laugh at me. Maybe they will say, oh, this was smart, this was stupid. Doesn't really matter. It's just the point is to give something that you consider worthy. It doesn't have to be worthy to everyone. It will never be. It can be stupid to some. But if you have the drive and the desire to create something, you should not just put it in the corner to wait for better days or to wait for everyone else to disappear so you can have an open stage. Because that would be your, that would be your excuse then. You would say, oh, but nobody is doing it. You know, you can never please the people that have excuses. Because they say, oh, everyone is doing it. Who am I, you know? And then you have the opposite. Nobody is doing it. How can I now create a market? Well, let me tell you, it doesn't matter. If nobody is doing it, if everybody is doing it, there is place for everyone. And, you know, I'm selling basically marketing and sales, doing it your way. Like who, everyone is selling marketing and sales. And then people pick me because of my content and my personal brand. They don't want to work with someone else. And if I was thinking, oh, but Marie Forlau does it, Amy Portifield does it, 
yeah so what yeah like okay and and i mean i never had that fear of um i don't believe in competition and i don't believe in like somebody's going to steal your content and they say that to me all the time here in serbia like oh what if i post something and then somebody steals it nothing what like this is internet everything has already been said and done get over yourself you're not special <laughs> snowflake <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. not about like being so revolutionary you know your video which was about you don't have to feel right to do good yes resonated with me and put yeah. me back into my groove to start my global expansion basically and, and it was by the a way, video that, like, that advice has been spoken by what, you know. from seneca you know <laughs> yeah so you know and i read seneca so why yes. didn't it resonate yes. with me then why did it resonate when i heard you talk about it for a reason we don't know i don't know you don't know yeah, so why right. would you not show up from some stupid excuse and prevent that message by law of universe by god sending it to a person that needs it in that moment i needed to hear that video of yours in that moment yeah. i never click on all that she sends i click on two things she sends like a bunch of 20 links i clicked on yours so i believe in this you need to put the energy out there and also when i don't do that i feel very stuck and like the opposite of abundance when I don't give. Yeah. Now you have been able to create a, and a, a really good income, uh, especially compared to the people in your, your, your region, the people in our industry. Um, you have like workshops, a digital course, eBooks, journals. So seminars, <laughs> seminars. Yeah. And of course you're active on social media. And, and still, you have time to be active. You work out, you kind of keep yourself healthy. Of course, we talked about boundaries being so important. But because of all these activities, um, you, sh you know, let's talk about this, right? You, you, you mentioned in our, um, one of your podcast interviews, mm -hmm. like you, you know, as a kid, you learned, I think it was from your grandfather, to, sh to you know, when, even when you don't feel like doing something, uh, you don't have to feel like it, that you just, you just do it yeah right. like it, it was from my dad but he learned it from my grandfather that sadly passed a month before i was born but all the messages are still here i feel i feel them he was a military pilot and uh, they were very disciplined around everything so when i was a kid my dad would say okay clean this or you know do this clean your room do the homework or anything and sometimes I would say, uh, I don't feel like it. And just to, you know, to protest. And he would say, well, it's okay. Don't worry. You don't have to feel like it. You just have to do it. And he would laugh. And I would be so upset because first he was joking. You can't actually argue with someone who is laughing. That's a problem. And you're still upset as a kid because you didn't win. And then I would clean it, you know, and I would be thinking, what should I tell him next time? This didn't work. <laughs> and that was actually a good lesson because I'm very persistent, persistent. So I was repeating that same excuse. I don't feel like it. And he's like, every time he'll be like, it's fine. You don't have to feel like it. You just have to do it. And I just remember that. And every time in life, when I don't feel like doing something, I know it is good for me. That is the belief that I've created. And as a kid, the belief was dad will be happy, mom will be happy, the trash will be out, the, I don't know, I will wash the dishes. This was not every day. This was just like once a week or something, you know. But I would remember those, that what I do when I don't feel like it brings good results and makes me satisfied and proud and makes those that I love happy. So, yeah, that was also... A part of it is not becoming a people pleaser, you know what I mean? Because that's a, that's a little next, like it can be a problem if you're all the time pleasing others. But I don't, I don't have that <laughs> situation. But yeah, that was what made me happy as a child. And that is what I implement now. I always, every year, I try to embark new challenge. Two years ago, 
I started the bodybuilding challenge because my body was very weak. I had an accident in the gym. I broke my sacrum and hurt three vertebra. And I couldn't move properly for a long time. I couldn't sit, I couldn't block for one hour and it was horrible. I couldn't sleep from the pain for one year. And then after that, I was doing physical therapy, rehabilitation, everything. And I decided I want to go back to the gym and pay a trainer and do bodybuilding to build some muscle. And one year I was going five times a week. And it's amazing, amazing the result that I've made. And after the one first year, uh, that was 2018. And then I said not, not, last year, it was uh, November. And I said, now I need something new. I don't find this challenge anymore. I feel good in my body. I feel strong. And then I enrolled the Hatha Yoga teacher training. Because my whole motivation in life is to do what feels uncomfortable because then I'm on the right path. Like I don't have to feel like it in order to do it, which is very lucky for us humans because most of the times we are slobs and we don't feel like doing anything. Like if I could just <laughs> eat Mac nuggets the whole day and just lie in bed, I think that would be a dream. <laughs> but the good part is that you don't have to feel like anything and you can do everything. Like how yeah. amazing is that? I think that's like a blessing is uh, well i mean the way you say it i think a lot of us don't realize that a lot of us think especially for it, this is interesting because for, especially for those of us who are more spiritual we somehow have this not all of us but i know sometimes i have this idea that well maybe I, if i don't feel like it somehow my intuition and my spirit says i shouldn't be doing it but it's like okay what what part of that is an excuse that's actually my mind playing Lazy tricks on human. me right <laughs> but you're right if i could just sit on the couch watch netflix eat popcorn you know, all day, that's yeah. what, I'm great that's wonderful but i show up here i blog i make videos i create courses just like you do and yeah. our life is so much more meaningful and rich because of it so one of the things that when we start to put ourselves out there, right? And you, you said this, this is one of the, the key reasons that people don't do it. They, they fear rejection. They mm -hmm. fear criticism. Shaming, blaming, yeah, criticism, because, physical uh, danger. Yeah, yeah, especially for women, right? Like, yeah. like but, but it's also connected, this, this criticism, I think is connected a lot with the, with the inner critic. Maybe yeah. they, so, like, we might even get 10 positive comments and then we Remember get one comment. One from somebody who is anonymous, who mm -hmm. says we're ugly, or who says that, that, was, that was foolish, or what, whatever it may be. How do we, yeah, how, how, how do we deal with that? How, how do we think about, well, but the fact is, we are going to get some rejection. And, yeah, and you right get now it I'm the moment you show up. Yeah, go ahead. You get it the moment you show up, and I showed up when I was 21 and very insecure about everything as every other girl that is 21, but, I feel that it's a muscle and it grows with use. It's like in the gym. You come with the muscle that is atrophied in the gym. You come with your muscle that is atrophied with criticism. You don't have a thick skin. You don't have a short memory. And then the more you are in this business, the more stones people throw at you. So I was very severely harassed for the past years. I had been physically like um, followed, uh, online attacks, bullying, um, stolen identity, try money extortion. So I've seen it. I've seen it all in the past two years. Thanks God, I'm not no longer living full time in Serbia. So I don't have that kind of trouble anymore. So I was very, I was suffering with that. I went to psychologist every week. I was in fear. Honestly, my boyfriend was following me around because I, at one point when it was severe, I couldn't like, I didn't feel comfortable to go uh, to walk alone in the dark or so, things like that. Now I'm good, but that was for a whole year. So this, I think, is a, it's a process. I don't think that I would be able to uh, scale, to bring my business and personality to the next level if I didn't go through that. And there are a lot of women and people generally who would maybe give up. And if they did give up, if I give up, gave up, I would not judge me. And I wrote in my journals last year a lot about what has been happening to me. And I said to myself, it's okay if you give up after this. You, this is not the only way you can make a living. You're very capable. You can make money from anything. And you're very persistent and hardworking. If this is not, uh, if you have pros and you have cons, and if the cons are so strong, it doesn't have to be 100. It can be one that is a deal breaker for you.
It's like in a relationship. If it's a deal, deal breaker for you, if you're vegan and the guy eats meats and that's a deal breaker, then it's a deal breaker. It doesn't matter like the other 90. So I put this in my journal. I said, Jovana, if you decide to quit after this, after being followed, stalked, harassed, bullied, a stolen identity and all of that, you should, you should, maybe you should, you know? And I thought I will, I will. I thought I was done with it. You know, I was done with this. And this is coming from somebody who makes over $60,000 a year in a country, net profit in a country where the salary is three fifty dollars a month as a professor, my mom. So I think that's okay. I think nobody talks about it, but I was on the verge. I was like thinking maybe this was not for me because I'm very as everyone else. I mean, I'm sensitive. I'm not because I'm a woman, because I'm a human, you know, and you get scared, especially things repeat themselves. Like, you know, in a month, a few times you get paranoid. It's a human thing. You get thought loops. It's a human thing, but you have books, you have psychologists, you have coaches and you have people who've been through this shit before you. So you can give up and it's okay to give up. I don't think that, oh, we should shame people that give up after that. No, they're just taking care of yourself and taking care of yourself is always the best thing. And the first thing that you should be thinking about, not about likes, not about money, not about what will people say. I don't care what will people say. People never say what I want them to say. So that's like, why bother? And the only question was, am I feeling the drive to do this anymore? And then you, I found you. And that's why I'm here. Not in life, but <laughs> on social media and yeah. on the internet. And that's why I invested like $5,000 in my US website and energy and money and time in my content. That's why I started this weekly podcast because I know I'm here to stay. Okay, I, like bad things are gonna happen again. And maybe I will give up and that will be okay. So yeah. I'm not here to impress anyone. I'm here to do this because if I feel this is my mission and my purpose and that I bring joy and I bring knowledge to others and inspiration, I will be here. And if God or universe wants me out, they will force me out. They will have to force me out. And mm -hmm. I thought I was happening last year. I, I really was. Wow. But then somehow I came back mm. and I'm here now. And I'm, I feel great now. Like, you know, it was a phase. Wow. I'm, I'm glad you're here um your audience is glad you're here so i'd love for uh for people to know how uh, of course we're going to have the links for where to find you on social media your website etc but um what kind of person would you love to work with as a client um you know how how can people work with you basically my ideal client is a woman that is 30 to 60 years old that maybe she's leaving the corporate world and she just needs that help with marketing and sales in her own way um, not somebody that will make somebody do something i will tell them what needs to be done and then we will find how we can do it so that their soul is happy because i hate uh, doing things because they have to be done. I want to work with people that question me because I'm a questioner. So if they say, but why do I need to do a Facebook ad? I will say, no, you don't need to. Here are 10 other options. And if they say, no, 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 I'll say, okay, what about this? What about this? And if we go through everything and they say, I still don't want to do this, then I will tell them, okay, what's the least thing that you feel least resentful to let's see or let's see why do you hate something because i do that to myself as well i don't like instagram and now i made a challenge two days ago to post for 100 days and let's see if i like it because if i have such a resistance towards something there is something there so let me learn about myself by doing what i feel like i hate doing so I will try to always with my clients see why is the resistance there because it's both like business coaching and consulting with me. It's not a program in English. I don't have a film course. It's all customized to you. So you send me an email. I tell you if I can help you. And trust me, I'm honest because 90% of the people I reject in Serbia because I see they're not for me. And that's just the way I do business. As I said, I'm a very religious person. I believe that in my integrity, if I can sleep at night, know that I did the right thing. That's the only thing that is important because I know that money will come. I'm good with money. I love money and money loves me, but I don't want to sell something to someone that will not help him or her because they will not be satisfied. They will not recommend me. And that's not how I build this business. 
Yeah. And that's not how we'll build my next one. So basically anyone who needs help with marketing and sales and feels stuck. And another thing that I can offer, since I have this huge network of 1,500 women that have been through my courses in like eight or more countries now at this moment, I can bring them the community that they need. And I can also bring them all the people that can help with design, development, Facebook ads that are much cheaper because I'm originally from Serbia. So those are the things that I offer. It's nothing that is special that you can't find anywhere else. But the reason why somebody will pick to, to work with me is because they uh, vibe with my energy. And that's the only reason. Because the knowledge I have is just accumulation of tons of books I've read and tons of courses. And it can be found even on Google like everything else. But for somebody to give you that knowledge in one hour that I've accumulated for like 15 or more years, I think that's worth every penny yeah. because that's how I learned personally. So no, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, people who resonate with your story, uh, your experiences, your personality, um, your values will, will, yeah. will love to work with that's you. That's so very important. That's how I find my teachers. Yeah, if we yeah. don't have the same values, I don't care that they're an expert in their field. Right. They just don't click with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ivana, thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, it's, it's been an amazing journey that you've had. And uh, you've been able to, to share a lot in this interview. I mean, a lot of lessons, a lot of um, sort of like little stories that we can keep in mind to, to help us move forward. So thank you so much. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to sharing this with my audience. Thank you for having me. And if anyone needs any help, uh, just send me an email. And Yeah, I'll let's make sure to, your email yeah. is, uh, can you say your email for everybody? Yeah, it's J-O-V-A-N-A dot M-I-L-J-A-N-O-V-I-C at gmail.com. Yeah, you But we can link it. Yeah, we can put it below. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you <laughs> so great. much. Yeah, thank you, Giovanna.